Is there any requirement? Is there any process? Is there any steps? Is there any strategy that God employs to recruit, to call man and woman in the ministry, in the mission for his work? We see in the book of Isaiah chapter 6, the call of great prophet Isaiah. God called him. And he called him in a very interesting manner. As we study, as we dig deeper into this chapter, within these given verses, we find all the nuances, all the details, how he chooses and how he elects people for the ministry. The very first verse says, if you see, in the year that King Uzziah died, in the year the King Uzziah died, I show the Lord sitting upon a throne. In the year King Uzziah died, if you try to find the historical background or the setting of this call or commission of Prophet Isaiah, we see this name. Why is this name important for us, this king's name? You know, if you study the history of Israel, after the death of Solomon, under the reign of his son Rehoboam, the kingdom was divided into northern kingdom, Israel and the southern kingdom, Judah. This king, after many centuries, he sat on the throne in 792 BC while his father Amaziah was assassinated means killed he sat on the throne when he was just 16 years old he started reigning in the kingdom of Judah and he reigned for 52 years 50 years he reigned on the throne. He was a great king. If you study, he was a great king. Under his reign, Judah prospered in many ways. He innovated. He built many buildings. He erected walls. He started new ways of farming. Many new weapons were invented. Many wars were won under his kingship. He was a great king, a mighty king. But as he continually reached or on the top, Second Chronicles chapter 26, she, his downfall began when he was filled with pride. He even wanted to perform the duty of a priest. He wanted to perform the sacrifice as well, which was not the duty of a king, which was supposed to be done by a priest. He went inside the temple and he wanted to burn the incense. He did not listen the warning given by priest. He admonently entered the temple and tried to perform the duty of a priest. And the very moment the word of God says he was struck by leprosy on his forehead. And he died as a leper. 
Now, in this juncture, when he died or when he was inflicted with leprosy, there began a national crisis, a chaos, because these people, this people of Judah, they have seen this king. Some of them have seen their entire life. This king is reigning. This king is leading us. This king is winning the world. This king is leading us. And they had the total dependency towards him. And in this crisis, God calls prophet Isaiah. What we see, the first point here, crutches removed. In verse 1, we see crutches removed. Crutches mean something that you use. If you are having some difficulty to work, you use crutches. You use stick. In Hindi, we say baisakhi. Crutches. We see here, the first thing God does when he wants to call someone or recruit someone, the first, the very first thing we see here, God's doing in this prophet's life, in this nation's life, that he removes crutches. Because the death of King Ujia was a national crisis. It's a time of difficulty. It's, it was a time of chaos. It was time of fear. Because there is now no one who is so capable, who is so strong like Uziah. They have depended upon him so much. They have looked upon him so much. Now the throne is empty. Throne is empty. There is no more Ujia. Sometimes God removes clutches from our lives to shift our dependency towards Him, to refocus towards Him. Who is the real King? Who is mighty one? Who is sovereign? What we see here, King Uzziah's death shook the nation. Now the throne is empty. We also have crutches. You and I also have crutches in our lives whom we depend, whom we lean on. Sometimes it could be our family members, sometimes it could be our background, sometimes it could be our education, sometimes it could be we ourselves. We don't think we need God. Sometimes it could be money. Anything you depend on, anything you lean on, because as a human being, we are all leaning towards something or another. It's not that we don't have crutches in our lives. We all have crutches. We all have our dependencies. It could be your father, it could be your mother, it could be... Your education, it could be you yourself think that, oh, I am capable enough, I am sufficient. When you don't give the place to God, when you don't give God first, something is sitting on your throne, God is going to remove that crutch. Because we all have idols in our lives, you know, idols. 
A.W. Tauzer says, God not only hates the idols in your hand, but he hates equally idols in your mind. You also have idols that need to be removed. And God is definitely going to remove it if he wants to use you. Because he wants to be king. He wants to reign over you. And he will remove all the dependency. If you don't make God your God, then God is going to remove your God. God would eliminate all the competing dependency upon your life. So King Uziah died and the throne was empty. But Isaiah saw God still reigning. God still on the throne. Verse 1 to 3. In the year King Uziah died, what did he see? What did Isaiah see, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne. A throne on the earth was empty, but the throne in heaven was occupied. High and lifted up, the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet and with two he flew now the throne on earth was empty but in heaven in the vision in the trance what did Isaiah see God in the throne so what does it mean control amidst chaos what do we see here control amidst chaos and who is this who controls amidst chaos it is God on earthly level what we see Judas and poor prophet Isaiah looks like oh we are vulnerable now we are susceptible we are so much weak now oh what is going to happen because they whole life they depended upon this king now he is dead now he is no more whom shall we look but still when we see the throne is occupied god is sitting on the throne in your lives you may have different chaos different crises you may have sicknesses diseases failures People might have called you. People might have said, you will amount to nothing. You are good for nothing. You are a failure. You may have certain difficulties. You may have problems in your life. All this looks like life was going nowhere. But if you look, Carefully, God is still on the throne. You may have lots of troubles in your life. Some of you may have pain in your life. Nobody sees your inner pain. But know that God is still on the throne. He controls. So, Despite Ujia's death, despite the, all the ensuing cures, what did Prophet Isaiah see? That he is still on the throne. You know, in our lives, many times we feel that what is happening? You live old enough, you will experience this. Some of you are very young now. You know, Sometimes you may question God. God, why this? Why I am so weak? Why I am always sick? Why I am always facing all the problems and difficulties? Why this, this happened to me? You may have lots of questions and looks like life is totally out of control. 
Nobody is caring you. Nobody is thinking about you. But trust God. He never changes. He is sovereign. He knows. He sees. He understands. Trust God. He is still on the throne. You are here. You may be having, having lots of confusions, chaos. God is still on the throne. Amen. Can I see your hand? Do you agree? God is still on the throne. In 740 BC, King Ujia died. National crisis arose. People were confused. People were in dilemma. People were getting panic attack. Seeing all the surrounding nations. Any time, any moment. Enemy may attack. This strong king has fallen. Things looked bleak. But Prophet Isaiah saw that God is still on the throne. God was still in control amidst this chaos. God controls over every situation and circumstances. You may think God has abandoned you, God has forsaken you, but especially in the time of turbulence, God is in control. Praise the Lord. Are you understanding? Are you getting it? God is in control, my dear brother, in your life. God has a perfect plan for you, my dear sister. It's not an accident that you are here. The crisis that you see now will turn into your testimony. Praise the Lord. If you trust God, He has brought you with a purpose. God controls times. God controls kings. God controls politics. God controls every nuances of your life. Every step that you are taking. God controls. My dear brothers and sisters. Know that you may have sickness, but still God is in control. You, you may think, what would happen? My future. God is in control. God is still sitting on the throne. Number three, if God wants to call you, he will grant you closer look. Let us see. Verse four. Verse four, you can read. And and one called to another said, Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundation of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. So what does it mean? He saw the glory. He saw the majesty. My third point is closer look granted. Closer look granted. Until and unless you experience God in a personal, in an intimate way, you will not understand the greatness of God. Until and unless you kneel down and pray and pray and pray, you will not encounter the closeness of God. The more closer you go to God, more revelation you will get. More closer you go, more experience you have, deeper your worship will become. Or else you will be a shallow man and woman, merely surviving in the ministry. So what did we see? God granted the vision. God shown the glory. God shown the majesty to 
made man like Isaiah. He saw the vision. He saw the God sitting on the throne. His robe feeling. The dress soul of the temple. Seraphim singing holy, holy. I just vision of God seeing seraphims, an angelic being, a fiery being. Seeing God holiness, hearing the proclamation, holy, holy, provided, given, the understanding to prophet how God is majestic how God is awesome how God powerful it made him realize do you seek personal encounter with God do you seek personal encounter with God have you tried to have you ever grapple with the fact God, I don't want to have this just head knowledge. I want to have this personal experience, intimate relationship with you. Have you ever tried? One time I prayed, not twice I prayed. I prayed whole night. And at last I said, God, if you are not going to use me, if you are not going to transform me, if you are not going to change me, then you kill me. Now when I look back, I get scared. What would happen if God really kills? God can kill, you know. It is God who gives the life and it is God who takes. When God kills, it's not murder. It's just taking back the life that he has given, you know. Sometimes in our innocence we do pray. So the closer look, Karit se deka Parmeshwar ko, uska mahanta ko, uska mahima ko, angels ga raha hai. Angels look, dek bhi nahi raha hai. Six wings, seraphims ka kitna hai? Six wings. Do se आंख को बंद किया है और दो से पैर को कवर और दो से क्या कर रहा उड़ रहा है और उड़ उड़ के क्या कर रहा है गा रहा है पवित्र 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 परमेश्वर पवित्र सो नजदीक से करीब से अपॉन सीइंग क्लोजली हैविंग दिस विजन हैविंग दिस रिलेशन रिवेलेशन इस Understanding towards God, God deepen. Praise the Lord. More closely we see God. More closely we experience God. Our life will transform. Our life will change. Therefore, seek continually the personal encounter to God. You are here. How are you going to experience God? Through His word, through prayer. Huh? Do you pray? Do you just simply talk, talk, talk? Or you try to experience God? We are, sometimes we are like we just speak what we want to speak to God and we just leave. Pray. Earnestly. Pray. Seriously. Try to experience God. Try to have access heaven in your room. Pray.
So when you start understanding God, what do you see? What did Prophet Isaiah hear? What did Prophet Isaiah hear? The first thing he hear angelic being singing. What is that? Holy, holy, holy. Three times. That means what? It is the emphasis. Three times holy, holy underscores the meaning that God is holy. God is separate from every pollution. Every unrighteousness, from every unholiness, he is completely alienated. He is such a holy, there is no iota, no atom of unholiness in him. He is perfectly holy. He is inwardly holy, he is outwardly holy, whatever he does is holy, whatever he do is holy. That is the reason he cannot have fellowship with us because we are sinners. He is such a holy God, he cannot have fellowship with sinners. That is the reason sinners are separated from him because he is such a holy God, he cannot have fellowship, he cannot have relationship. But the solution is cross isn't it he is holy god he is good god he is just god but at the same time he is a loving god and the solution we see the cross now what does it do when we try to understand when we try to grasp that he is holy what does it do you know when you experience the magnitude of god's holiness when you understand, when you experience the magnitude of God's holiness, it magnifies your unholiness. It magnifies the dirt within our souls. We, some of us, we may have this, even I, sometime back, I had this attitude, that, uh, I'm better than this, or I'm better than, holier than thou. But when we compare with God, we are filled with all the dirt, all the unholiness. Our thoughts are unholy. Our attitudes are unholy. Our actions are unholy. It's all unholy. So closer look, the purpose of getting closer look, getting closer access is to see how holy he is and how unholy we are. My dear brothers and sisters, you are and I am unholy till we are cleansed. So what do we see here? That's the reason the commentator Matthew Henry says, No attribute of God is more dreadful to sinners than His holiness. It is frightening to us when we really try to understand how holy He is, how majestic He is. Ishwar ka pavitrata ka gyan ham logo ko jitna milta hai, utna hi ham logo ko darna hai. सोच के देखो ना हम लोग कितना गंदा है ना अगर मेरा सोच को यहां में प्रोजेक्टर में दिखा देने से आप लोग हमको नफरत करेगा और जो स्माइल कर रहा है उसका दिखाने से भी शेख थी हाउ अनहोली वी आर सो गेटिंग क्लोजर लुक गेटिंग डीपर अंडरस्टैंडिंग इज टू 
have this understanding that we are unholy. Isaiah, Isaiah, he experienced what? What did Isaiah say? Verse 5 and 7 says, Isaiah 5 and 7 says, And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Verse 6 says, Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, your guilt is taken away, and your sin is atoned. Jab aap se, aap, jab tak aap apna aap ko dekhte rega, problem dikha nahi deta hai. Lekin jab aap Ishwad mein dekhta hai, aur apne aap ko dekhta hai, you understand how unholy we are. So I just saw the vision. I just saw God, how holy he is, how majestic he is. Now he sees himself. Whoa, I'm helpless. Oh, who am I? I'm a sinner. My lips are unclean. I dwell among the people who are having unclean lips. I'm lost. I'm undone. I'm hopeless. You know, until and unless you realize that you have a problem, until and unless you realize that you have really problem, you don't have chance to survive of that problem. You have to accept that you are sick. Only the treatment is possible. You need to come to the realization. You need to come to that understanding that, oh, I have problem. When I see myself, when I my, see my people, I don't see any problem. But when I see God, oh, unto me. I'm a sinner. Oh, unto me. Who is going to save me? Prophet saw himself. Seeing his magnitudes of holiness he saw himself and it magnified his sins essentiating every dirt within his soul and he realized oh my lips are unclean why because my heart is unclean i'm a sinner so thirdly what we see here is God, fourthly, we see God cleansing, cleansing his instrument. He will cleanse you, my dear brothers and sisters, until and unless you are cleansed. A seraphim came, bought with tongue a coal, and let it touch the leaves of the prophet now you are clean now you are atoned how are we going to be atoned how are we going to be cleansed book of colossians says chapter 2 verse 13 and 14 says our all sins our all guilts our all debts our all records of sin have been crucified it is nailed on the cross do you believe that christ died for you do you believe that christ took the penalty of your sin the punishment the judgment for your sin until and unless you come to that realization that what christ has done on the cross for you and I, problem kya hai pata hai? We take for granted 
what he has done for us we take for granted until and unless god purifies you until and unless god cleanses you he is not going to use you for his holy work i just saw he is helpless i just saw how is he going to speak with his unclean lips it need to be purified it need to be sanctified it need to be segregated so therefore cleansing work must be done until and unless you repent until and unless you change until and unless you have this understanding that i am going to serve that holy god for that very purpose i need to be cleansed continuously with his words with prayer with meditation i need to change my heart and if you realize that oh i am a sinner god will take the initiative of cleansing you it is not who is going to cleanse yourself it is seraphim who came and cleanse prophet isaiah you cannot change yourself you cannot change your heart it is god who is going to change you it is god who is going to transform you my dear brother and sister but for that you need to realize you need to repent you need to accept you need to confess that oh i have problem in me if you think oh i am good i'm okay i'm then god is not going to cleanse you except crow we are not worthy except that we are sinner christ redemptive work his atoning work believe in that so cleansing the light coal that touch i just sleep symbolize the purification that needed for his prophetic ministry you and i also need purification if you want to be used by god you need to be cleansed you need to be a holy vessel if you want to be used for holy purpose your character your attitude your thought your speech need to be cleansed continuously you need to repent continually you need to grieve over your uncleanness continually you need to weep you need to cry out to god for his help to save yourself from yourself because you are fighting with all the glitters of this world your fleshly desires sometimes overwhelms you this world offers you a lot your flesh seeks a lot of satisfaction who is going to save you if you don't cry out to god your sinful tendencies your sinful propensity all those yearnings all this urge who is going to save you because those are unclean if you don't cry if you don't realize it's a problem it's a disease which is going to ultimately kill me if i don't repent if i don't seek god's grace isaiah realized this is a problem isaiah realized i need to be saved so embrace god's refining process realize acknowledge necessity for the purification if you want to be effective in god's mission field or in the ministry god's forgiveness is available for those who seek for it those who realize they are sinner those who realize they have problem those who realize and those who confess i am a sinner 
I have unclean lips. I have unclean heart. If you don't realize, if you don't accept, God will not cleanse you until and unless you realize. Think for a while. If you don't accept that you are sick, even though you are sick, you don't seek the treatment. Isaiah realized he is unclean. Verse 8 says, And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I. After cleansing his instrument, he chooses for his glory. Chosen for his glory. You are chosen for God's glory, my dear brothers and sisters. You are chosen for God's glory. I just was not chosen that he was very smart, very educated, very strong. He had wealthy background for his race. Nothing as such. He was chosen for God's glory, for only his glory. God selects for his honor, my dear brothers and sisters. God selects God selects for his own owner God was Isaiah was not chosen that he was meritorious he was qualified he had lots of ability he was eloquent he had lots of talents gifts all sort of effective characteristic that could be used, that could be employed in the ministry. No, he was chosen for his glory. You may think, who am I? I don't have any talents. I don't speak proper English or I don't speak proper Hindi. My thoughts are hazy, often. I'm not smart. I'm not good at studies. Even I don't look handsome or pretty. You may have lots of inferior complexity, but please know that God has chosen you for his glory. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God has the purpose for Isaiah. God had his own plan for Isaiah. Likewise, God has a purpose and a plan for you. That's the reason you are here. He has chosen you for his glory. Isaiah was chosen for God's glory, likewise, you are chosen for God's glory. What would be the surest sign that you are called? What would be the surest sign that you are called, you are chosen, when you have this desire to say, Here am I, Lord, send me. God was saying, whom shall we send? Because God sees him, but he wants to hear his willingness. He wants to hear his desire to be used. You know, the single most determining factor that God has called you, God has chosen you, is your desire to be used. Your willingness to go. Here am I. Send me, Lord. Send me. Use me, that desire, not your qualification, not your eloquency, not your gift, not your talents. In the world, you see, there are 
every third person is more intelligent than you every third person is more qualified than you every third individual is more educated more smart more eloquent than you and me but why did he choose you and me because of our desire so develop this desire this burning desire that god use me for your glory god use me for your purpose if you don't cry out no one was cry out god use me for your glory send me lord equip me lord for your purpose daily cry out to god help me god help me to speak help me to understand your word help me to preach cry out daily if you don't have the desire we must suspect our intention our motives for coming here 